Motions? Motions for President Council are closed then. You can take the vote now. Mm -hmm. So let's have a vote for, by Council. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landing? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Landing. You may not feel that way as the meeting goes on. <laughs> we have a motion to, for the election of Vice President of Council. Mr. President, yeah. I'd like to nominate uh, Matt Donovan. Second. Julie, call the roll. Oh, excuse me. Are there any other nominations for the Vice President? <coughs> okay, Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? <clears throat> yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Election Vice President Council, welcome Mr. Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. The Law Director will now give the oath of office for the uh, President of Council. Actually, there's a guest. I'm sorry? Mr. Gills. Well, Mr. Gills is giving it. Okay. Support the Constitution. Solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States <coughs> and of the State of Ohio. And will obey the laws of the United States and the State of Ohio. That I will, that in I, all respects, that I will, in all respects, observe the provisions of the Charter and the ordinances of the Municipality of Mentor. Observe the ordinances and the provisions of the Charter of the City of Mentor and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of president of council. And will faithfully administer the office of the du the duties of the office will of the faithfully, president. Faithfully discharge the duty, watch my lips. <laughs> <laughs> faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the president of council. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the president of council. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't have that kind of trouble in my office, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Are you going to put it on the wall? Oh, there's a pen over there. Wow. This is my first official duty. This is a bigger turnout than I expected. <laughs> Thanks for coming. You may be here for other council business, I realize, but since you're here, I do have a few words to say. I have abbreviated my remarks to 45 minutes instead of an hour and a half. <laughs> Perfect. Seriously, I want to recognize a few people present. Uh, Jim Gills, who just gave my oath, is Lake County Engineers, the Lake County elected engineer. Thanks for being a great boss and a great engineer. May you win re-election so I may keep my full-time job. <laughs> Jason Williger, candidate for Lake County Commissioner. Jonah Schultz, candidate for U.S. Congressional District 11. Best wishes in your primary. Katie Berger from Congress, Congressman Dave Joyce's office. Hi, Katie. Family members, Cindy and Ernie Layton, my sister, my brother-in-law. And lastly, but most significant, my wife, Barrett Landig, who took a chance on me and came from Norway on a fiancé visa in 1981. <laughs> Wave your hand. Thanks for your support. Councilman Krieger, I want to thank you for your service. As council president, are all these folks here because of you? You. We're here for you now. <laughs> you look relieved, John. Yeah, I am. I thank Council for the favor of their vote. Charles Spurgeon said, every great favor brings a great trial as its shadow. 
For me, that translation could be, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> You see, this council is a very senior and stable group of leaders. There are four previous council presidents up here. Their experience is either invaluable or it is four other ways of doing things other than my way. Here is why I'm hopeful of the former and not the latter. When I deployed to the Middle East in 2015 with the Ohio Army National Guard, everyone on council was very supportive. They covered my duties in Ward 3. They all said, whatever you need, give us a call. They invited Barrett out socially. And when our water heater died, Matt Donovan and a buddy came and installed a new one. Barrett and I remember, and we are grateful. So I believe they will be a great support in this new challenge. The following is a City of Mentor public service pronouncement. The USS Mentor is in great shape, watertight seaworthy, and going places, or I could say places are coming here. She is well manned. Captain and city manager Ken Filippiak has his administration humming. Existing department heads are performing well, and new ones are setting the bar higher. They work hard, they're people smart, and they don't seem to care who gets the credit. Our safety forces are known as the best in the area. So what could go wrong? In the late 1970s, I was in the U.S. Nuclear Submarine Service. We had an expression, there are two kinds of ships, submarines and targets. That's substandard humor. <laughs> but more dangerous than a launch torpedo is a hot run torpedo. We trained for the hot run torpedo and we prayed it would never happen. Hot run torpedo should always be preceded by the words, this is a drill. When a weapons motor starts a propeller prematurely in the torpedo room or in the torpedo tube prior to launching it to sea, it is not a good day. The real thing is an internal killer. To be clear, a hot run torpedo in this analogy is one that is inside of one of our own crew members on the USS Mentor. You see today there are lots of social torpedoes out there and government is often a target, perhaps for good reason, lack of trust. In our national political discourse, it is common practice to privately and publicly disparage those we disagree with. So when public employees encounter such bad behavior by residents, constituents, it may launch a hot run torpedo inside of them. If the torpedo is not stopped, great damage occurs and trust in government is the casualty. What to do? The good news is that those personal hot-run torpedoes inside of us can be disarmed. This vignette is from a flood control project in my warn. A group of residents met with the administration to express frustrations over some construction issues. One resident was using some pretty rough language. It even reminded me of my early days in the military. She looked at the administration's leader and paraphrasing mildly said something like, I can see by the way you're looking at me that you're not going to do a thing about this. You don't care and we are wasting our time. The leader calmly replied, it's your language, ma'am. Taken aback, she agreed to restrain her language and the meeting did a 180. It became productive. The hot run torpedo that was humming in a number of city officials, including me, was disarmed. Trust in City Hall was sustained or even, or even increased. A resident told me later that they were embarrassed by the disparaging words from their neighbor and appreciated what the city was doing. What I witnessed was the disarming nature of a leader's commitment to be a public servant instead of merely a public employee. <coughs> they are very different cultures. Servants, real servants, are not always spoken kindly to, nor treated well. It comes with the territory. The key for each of us is whether or not, in the heart, heat of the moment, our why for being in government is strongly grounded in being a public servant, not being a public official, and not being a politician. If serving is not our commitment, we may be in the wrong profession. But 
if being a public servant is the real why behind our jobs, then we can stand up to almost any how, how we are treated, how we are spoken to. Not knowing or remembering our why makes us very ordinary, or worse. I think all of us on council have experienced a resident that begins a tense conversation with, you know, I pay your salary. Or, as even less politely stated in the 17 November News Herald, we are paying for these morons who voted this in. That's a Mark 48 torpedo, in other words, a real big one. <laughs> they are really tough to disarm. But the council person on the scene could not have handled it any better. Mentor's leadership is top down and top shelf. It will continue to be if we remember our why of public service. Then we can take on any how that comes our way in order to build trust in the community we serve. And that will bring fair winds and Godspeed to the city of Mentor. After me, I state your full name. I'm Matthew Donovan. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws. And obey the laws of the United States. Of the United States and of the state of Ohio. And of the state of Ohio. That I will. That I will. In all respects. In all respects. Observe the provisions. Of, observe the provisions of the Charter. Of the Charter and ordinances. And ordinances of the Municipality of Mentor. Of the Municipality of Mentor. And will faithfully. And will faithfully discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the office. Of the office of Vice President of Council. Of Vice President of Council. Congratulations. Sir. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Sat next to uh, uh, Bruce for four years, and I didn't even know he talked. <laughs> it's incredible. I just want, I, I want to thank council for all their knowledge in, in, in the past four, four and a half years that we've all worked together. Uh, we've had our bouts. We've, we've had our problems. But in the end, we always do what's best for the uh, constituents, and that's what I love about this council. Um, I'd also like to recognize a... Uh, ex-council person out in the audience out there. My mother's out there, Jean Donovan, 97 years old. She came to see me. Look at her waving. My wife and my, my, wife and my two sons came, and uh, I just want to thank you guys uh, on council for uh, having the belief in me to give me this chance to be vice president, and uh, I really appreciate it, and I'm sure we're going to get a lot of great things done. We're very fortunate in this city. Uh, all our people get up, they go to work. The kids go to work and, and everybody goes to school. We just have a wonderful community. We've got excellent parks and police and fire is incredible. And, and uh, thank you all. I just really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Council Chambers will now rise and observe a moment of silence for the passing of Planning Commissioner Joe Sadoti. Thank you. You may be seated. Approval of the minutes. Council, you have the minutes of the regular meeting of December 3rd, 2019. Move to approve. Second. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. And the minutes of the work session of December 16, 2019. Moved to approve. Second. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. We have two public hearings this evening. Uh, prior to the first one, I just want to mention that in addition to the planning commission process at the city, administration reviews over an extensive council um, 
work session one and work session two tonight. Tours of the Bolton property for council folk. Workbooks and many emails. We have been deliberating one of the most significant and important developments in the history of the city of Menor. Ordinance number 20-0-01. Oh, I now call the public hearing for Ordinance 20-0-001 to order. This public hearing is being held pursuant to notice published and posted according to law. Julie, please read the title. An ordinance amending the codified ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended and the official zoning map by rezoning of approximately 8.126 acres of land from R2 single family residential district to RVG Village Green District at 7640 Lakeshore Boulevard and declaring an emergency. Excuse me, we'll do the rice property first. <laughs> Mr. Filipiak, do you or a member of the administration have any comments? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, do appreciate that, the location there, 7640 Lakeshore Boulevard. And uh, Ms. Mitchell will make a few comments. Thank you. Uh, the applicant uh, is proposing to rezone eight acres of the former Dale R. Rice Elementary School property on Lakeshore Boulevard from the R2 single-family residential to RVG Residential Village Green District. The applicant presented a conceptual plan at the August 1st, 2019 Planning Commission meeting for informal review that included a total of 20 sublots. The district regulations permit a maximum density of 2.5 units per acre in both the current R2 district and the proposed RVG. Following the informal review in August, the applicant submitted a preliminary subdivision and rezoning application for consideration by the Planning Commission at their October 3rd meeting. The applicant presented a revised plan for the formal rezone submission that included a direct connection to Rice Drive. However, the residents in the surrounding neighborhood expressed concern over the connection and presented a petition opposing it. The application was tabled to allow the applicant an opportunity to further revise the plan. The applicant reconfigured the subdivision design, returning the layout to a cul-de-sac format for the Planning Commission's review at the November 14th meeting. The revised layout reduces the length of the proposed street to fall within the 600-foot maximum allowance for a cul-de-sac and eliminates the Rice Drive connection. The Planning Commission voted to recommend approval of the proposed rezoning with this revised cul-de-sac design by a 5-0 vote with the conditions outlined in the staff report. Thank you. Does the applicant have any comments they would like to share? Uh, Greg Summers, Summers Real Estate Group. Um, a few comments. Um, the issue with the neighbors and the connection, we worked really close with the neighbors to resolve that issue, and they were great to work with, and I'm glad we were able to come to a, uh, a solution that was satisfactory to the city and the neighbors. Um, we feel that Cardinal Meadow is going to be a great new community. Um, we were really thorough in working with the city and working through the, all the issues. I also want to add that I met with... Uh, Law Director Zeman, and we're exploring some additional elements that we can work into the uh, deed restrictions for the future management of open space, because that was also a concern. And uh, one thing that I want to add to uh, the presentation tonight, there is some encroachments, as we're, I think everybody's aware of, and I've talked to uh, Kathy about. We're going to do some lot line adjustments to basically consolidate those small areas into the neighbor's yards, and they can put up a nice fence, and we found that that was the best solution to do that. So. Once we work through the rezoning, we're, we are committing to doing that, and um, I, think, I think that's all I have. So I'd open it up to any other questions that you guys have. Council, I have any questions? Mr. President, just one. Uh, Mr. Zeman, um, with, with that property, like you brought up, Mr. Summers, protruding into the yards, how was that agreement going to read? If, if, I know there's a fence, an existing fence now. Um, is there language drawn up for that particular situation? So, so my understanding is, and I, I had talked to Kathy about this, they're just going to be, they're not going to be lot splits. It'll just be a lot line adjustment. And we, and we could submit, I guess, if, if you guys wanted additional documentation 
or some type of agreement, or if that's just between us as a landowner and our commitment to doing the lot line adjustment to the neighbors. I, I, I guess if you guys want to see additional documentation, let me know. But we were just going to work directly with them and have our engineer give you know a, a good deal for the cost of doing the any title work, legal descriptions, anything required for the the lot line adjustments. That was our plan to work directly with the neighbors. That's all I got. I mean, I, I mean, okay, that's it. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this item? Anyone in the audience? Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this item? Anyone in opposition? Thank you. Council is in receipt of all correspondence and emails received pertaining to this matter. This public hearing is adjourned. Ordinance number 20. Zero, 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 0002. I now call the public hearing for ordinance 20.0002 to order. This public hearing is being held pursuant to notice published and posted according to law. Julie, please read the title. An ordinance amending the codified ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended and the official zoning map by rezoning approximately 186.53 acres from C1 Conservation and R4 Single Family Residential Districts to the PMUD Planned Mixed Use Development Overlay District for land adjacent to the south side of Johnny Cake Ridge Road and the east side of Center Street and extending to the village of Kirtland Hills border including permanent parcel numbers 16A01100010010 0020000030040000050 and 16A01300016 0030010 and 0210 by MKSK and Bolton Properties Limited and declaring an emergency. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Filipiak, do you or a member of the administration have any comments? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Mitchell, please. Thank you. The project uh, for the Bolton property is a proposed rezone of 186 acres of land located at the intersection of Johnny Cake Ridge and Center Street from the existing C1 conservation and our four single family residential districts to a planned mixed use development overlay district. On October 3rd, 2019, the Planning Commission reviewed the informal rezoning requested by the applicant who presented a mixed use development concept for the Bolton property. The formal rezoning application was then submitted for review by the Planning Commission on November 7, 2019 at a formal public hearing. After further review and discussions at both the November 14th and December 9th meetings, the Planning Commission recommended the approval of the proposed rezoning and preliminary development plans for a proposed planned mixed use development on December 9th by a vote of 6-1 with the conditions set forth in the staff report as well as the attached plans. The administration is recommending some minor modifications to these condi conditions as noted in red for further clarification. Thank you. Does the applicant have any comments they would like to share? Thank you, Council President. Um, I would like to invite, first I should say, my name is Chris Herman, principal with MKSK. I would like to invite Charlie Bolton uh, and welcome him to say a few words uh, as part of our presentation. Congratulations. Uh, Charles Bolton, 8021 South Center, well, Center Street. Shows my age, doesn't it? by saying South Center Street. I don't know when that went out of use. I want you to recognize my brother, Bill Bolton, over here, my wife, Julie, and, and uh, uh, 
we, we want to thank the council uh, and the Planning Commission, and I was so shocked when I heard of Joe Sedotti's death because he took a big interest in our project and was quite vocal about aspects of it. And Ken Filippiak, the city manager, Kathy, the, uh, Kathy Mitchell, director of planning, uh, Joe Zeman, law director, and uh, Kevin uh, Malachek, who's not here, who's the director of development. Uh, we've worked with all of these people, and we, we thank you very much for your help. And uh, I hope that uh, there are members of the audience here that will uh, chime in and join in our discussions. Um, we uh, have worked on this project very hard, and we're very grateful for the assistance of some pretty knowledgeable people in the planning commission, I mean, in the planning department, MKSK from Columbus. You've just heard, been introduced to Chris Herman. Uh, Ken uh, uh, Kalunchek, who is from Project Management uh, Corporation, uh, or consultants uh, here, and uh, uh, Tom Coyne, who's a member of who's the head of the real estate department, actually, at Thompson High and Flory. Um, we want this to be a good development. We realize that this is very important to the city of Menard. Um, change is difficult. Uh, there were many people my age in Menard who grew up uh, sledding uh, on our hill uh, on 615, believe it or not. That was a big hill in Menard. Uh, that was before anyone went skiing. and. Uh, a lot of people, you will realize, on Sundays would park all the way down the street, all the way down 16, all the way up our driveway. And so, you know, um, today there was a phone call I got from my wife on my cell phone. There's a bald eagle out in front of the house. Then just as I sat down, there was another phone call. It was a computer call uh, wanting me to buy some insurance. Um, <laughs> You know, there's a big tug between the beauty of nature and the reality of modern life. And our property has changed since it was the sledding mecca for, me for Mentor. And change is difficult, but change must come to our property. And that's what this is all about. And so uh, we, want to, we hope we've been forward thinking. We want to preserve the best that there is in the property by preserving 69 acres as a uh, natural uh, area that will be available to the public. It has some remarkable trees. We're lucky tonight to have Richard Cochran, Rich Cochran here to speak about it. He's the head of the Western Reserve Land Conservancy that will own this property and administer it for the use of the manor, of manor residents in perpetuity. Uh, we also have, have in mind a lot of trails on the property, about five miles of trails. So um, we hope that this will be a we're, we've been on this property and across the street for 100 years. I actually have lived on the property for 70 years. My wife has lived on it for 40 years. This meant a lot to us. And we hope the best for this development, and we hope that you will agree. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. So again, I'm Chris Herman with MKSK. Uh, we have a, a great team with us. Um, we've, we've had some great workshops with you uh, already. We've been working on this project. Uh, the family's been working on this for years. Uh, we've been working uh, very diligently since the summer, uh, meeting multiple times with the Planning Commission, uh, and we're excited to, again, share this project and answer your questions. Um, I'll quickly, since I know we have the community here, uh, provide a little overview. I think. You all are aware of this, but just to reiterate uh, what Mr. Bolton said, we are very excited. We feel very strongly about this plan. Uh, one of the key pieces of it is the preservation of almost 70 acres, uh, key natural features of this site, uh, some of the best in, in northern Ohio, uh, in this area, as a conservation area that will be preserved uh, for use by the community and as a natural area. Uh, Rich Cochran is here from uh, the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. I'd like him to speak a, a moment uh, for all of you and to the community. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you for having me here. Um, since 1996, it's been my privilege to serve as the president and CEO of Western Reserve Land Conservancy, which was formerly known as Chagrin River Land Conservancy. And in this role, I've had the chance and frankly the privilege to work on hundreds of conservation projects around this region. Since 1996, we've preserved uh, 60,000 acres of land in Northeast Ohio, both pr private and public, by completing nearly 800 individual conservation transactions. And of those 800 transactions, more than 20, I'm sorry, more than 200 of them have become public parks and preserves. With that context in mind, I'd like to share that I've never worked on a project with an ancient forest as significant as the one on this property. To my knowledge, there is only one forest in all of Northern Ohio that has trees that are as old as the trees on the Bolton property, and that is in Wayne County. There are many giant trees on the Bolton property, as I think some of you know, and we believe that two of them are state record trees, and on Friday, the state of Ohio forester will be there to confirm that. Um, because this is such an old forest, we have also found many rare species, including rare lichens. One of the lichens we found on the property is the only record of that species in all of Ohio ever. That's because the forest is so old, lichen, certain lichen only grow in ancient forests, and there are very few of them left. Um, we plan, as you know, to work with the Boltons to make this conservation area open to the public and connected to a much larger trail system that's woven throughout the development and connected to Newell Creek across the street. If this park is created, we are confident it will create a cherished amenity not only for the residents of Menor, but for residents of all of Ohio and perhaps other states as well. We believe it will draw people from other states. We also believe that this project will attract lots of public funding to make it possible to make it a public park and preserve. This public funding would include the Clean Ohio Fund, the Ohio EPA Water Restoration Fund, the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, the Ohio Forested Habitat Fund, and others. We base this on hundreds of conservation projects that we funded and completed. Um, I'll end there and just ask if there are any questions. Mr. Cochran, for the record, please state your name and address. Richard Cochran, uh, 2703 Rockland Road, Shaker Heights, Ohio. Mr. Landick. Mr. Mr. Cochran, could you just explain to the audience how what you need for this have to happen, this preservation of this, of this 69 acres? What we need to have happen? Yes. First thing is the plan has to be approved, obviously, so that the zoning is put in place. Then that parcel will be created, and we will enter. Uh, not, we already have entered into a contract contingent on the rezoning to purchase it from them, and that the terms of that contract are currently confidential. But we would have to raise the funding uh, to do that, and we're confident we can. And that contract it, that's happened since the last time we've seen you, I take it, because you didn't have it last meeting, I don't think. I honestly don't remember if it okay. was signed at the last meeting or not, but it is uh, a contract at the moment. I appreciate it. Thanks. This is the public hearing portion. Wait, no. Mm. Anyone else? No. Okay, I'll turn it back to Chris. Thank you very much. If I may, just a few more things. Again, I think you're all aware of this, but uh, for the discussion, for the community, uh, just a... Uh, overview, the proposal is to rezone this to plan mixed unit uh, development. As part of this, we are um, providing for uh, five sub areas, sub area A, uh, B, C, D, and E <coughs> for this map. Uh, each one has its own uses and development piece, but a key part of plan development in Mentor is the idea that you develop this as one cohesive area that works well together. Uh, responds to nature uh, and provides amenities for the community and we believe we've done that and taken advantage of, of great features of the site. We have a conceptual a street network proposed as part of this. Again, just so everyone's on the same page, uh, hopefully you can see this dot, laser dot. At the top of the site is, is Johnny Cake Ridge Road. Uh, on the north along the uh, western side is Center Street. Uh, at the bottom of this is Interstate 90. And then on our boundary here, we actually have a piece of Kirtland Hills, the city of Kirtland Hills, that uh, divides this property uh, through the conservation area. And we are bringing in the portion in the city of Mentor as part of this rezoning. It includes this road network, uh, which extends Norton Parkway into the site. I'll talk a little bit more about this, but this is 
uh, <coughs> ideally a village center <coughs> gathering area for the community and for the development. We have, which uh, we'll, when we come in final development plan, we'll have our name, but Street A, which is a north-south street internal development that provides circulation uh, between the different areas. We have a Street B to the south off of center that will provide access to the gateway area uh, as you come into Mentor. And then we have uh, residential streets, Street C and D and E, that provide access into the development as well as uh, access for the community and the public to the conservation area and the maze of the site. In addition to the conservation area, which I think is, is very significant for the city and the region, we also have park spaces provided for. <laughs> we, are, whoops, we are preserving the, um, along this sub area A, this northern part along Johnny Cake and along the northern part of Center Street, the, the mounds there uh, as an edge condition. We will uh, address stormwater as part of this project so that it is as contained and detained on this site. Uh, and improved. We are, a key part of this is preservation of the Bolton House as a central feature to this development uh, and as an edge to the conservation area, again, for the community to enjoy. The entry drive uh, to the house will be preserved as uh, a trail that connects it to the site. Um, just as an aside, it won't be a road. We have to create an alignment and an intersection uh, with Norton Parkway. So but we do want to preserve the nice tree line drive there. And then sprinkled throughout the different sub areas, there will be parks, gathering spaces, as well as a community gathering area here uh, by Center Street uh, for the development and for the, the community. We have, again, these different sub areas. The northern sub area A, this area is residential. Uh, the, the idea is to have townhomes along this main street that face the green space and conservation area. It's a great uh, feature internal to the site. We have blocks in here that are walkable. The streets lead you and, and have people pulled into as you walk through the community, uh, face into the conservation area, and mingle down into sub area B, which is our village center. This will be a mix of uses. Uh, retail, particularly along Norton Parkway, retail on the first floor, uh, commercial office, residential above. Um, this will serve the needs, local needs. This is not a shopping center or a new mall. This is a walkable, strollable, outdoor dining kind of destination for this neighborhood and for uh, the community. And then sub area C here to the south, uh, again, is the gateway where we expect to have offices, potential hotel uses uh, as a welcoming presence and also as an economic generator that also facilitates and helps with the development of the Cleveland Clinic across the street. So this is the illustrative site plan. Uh, you can see, I should probably describe a little bit for the community, these white uh, boxes are building footprints. You'll see the design, this is called traditional walkable design with the buildings along the streets, you walk along the sidewalks, walk along the streets, stroll past the storefronts. The surface parking lots are internal to the blocks. You don't experience them. You drive into them, you can walk into the development, but as you walk along the streets, you don't experience the surface parking lots. Uh, we, the gray areas are townhomes. Uh, for the residential, when we do planning, we don't draw the individual building footprints. I think it's important to point this out. So what we're drawing on the residential side are the, are the, the Blocks, you see the gray, these would be townhomes up here. These are single family lots. We did not draw the individual homes in the driveways. We're showing just the individual lots uh, as they fit here with the streets and alley that serve them. Down here we show office buildings, uh, hotel uses uh, in sub area C, small, small specialty grocery uh, on the site as well as part of this development. So uh, we think it really responds well to the site. It'll be a great amenity. Gateway to the mentor, economic development for the city, help facilitate the Cleveland Clinic development, create a gathering point, a central community gathering area uh, for the community, and a strollable, walkable area, and provide residential development of a type that's needed and underrepresented in the city of Mentor, as well as the lead-off piece, which is a fantastic conservation area that will be enjoyed and publicly available to all.
I can talk a little bit more detail about the sub areas. I think in Q and A, we've already had some discussions just to show some of the benchmarks uh, for residential development that we're talking about. This is the single family and townhome development style that we're talking about in sub area A and sub area B. This is the Bolton Estate. You see these are rendering showing what this would look like. This is looking uh, at the pond internal to the site, looking north and west towards the intersection of Johnny Cake and Center Street. This is the development, the neighborhood walkable development in sub area A. You can see the Bolton Estate preserved here. This is that street A spine that winds through the neighborhood. We'll have on-street parking for the public and for the community. This is a close-up of sub area B, again, this commercial uh, village node. You can see some of the benchmark pictures of the kinds of buildings here. It also has, can, takes advantage of the conservation area. We have uh, central gathering space. We have some retail here for everyone to enjoy. And then we have a rendering here to show you a sense of this. This is now Center Street at the bottom. We are now looking east. This is the conservation area uh, at the top of the picture. This is the new extension of Norton Parkway. This is the walkable retail mixed use environment. Again, you can see parking exists, but it's behind here, so you don't experience it. You can stroll this. There'll be outdoor dining. You can shop through here. We have a central gathering community place. Ideas probably have a little bit of retail uh, restaurant area and, and features for the community to gather and, and celebrate that space. So area C, which is the gateway to the community. Again, I mentioned hotel, offices. This is an economic generator. This is looking from uh, Interstate 90. Uh, you can see right here at the bottom right of the slide, this is the, the ramp that comes off of 90 to Center Street. This is Center Street. This would give you a sense of the hotel office development in this area. Again, parking and service parking would be the center. You'd experience uh, the buildings and the nice green space as a gateway into the city. Uh, and we think it's a, it's a really special <laughs> development. So uh, happy to answer any questions. Council? Excuse me, we'll reserve that till after the public hearing. Oh, I apologize. Let me say for the, the community at the, the planning commission meeting on uh, council, plan commissioners and council and the, all of you community raised concerns about traffic. Uh, we do have Lori here to talk about the traffic study. We've commissioned the traffic study as part of this. Uh, she can uh, share a little bit about that. Uh, I think it's also really important to say for all of you, for the community to understand, before we talk about traffic, that this is a special kind of development review process. It's a little different than some of the other things. In both situations that you see a mentor, uh, when a, a crop owner asks to rezone the site, go through the planning commission, go through council, when it's approved, it's rezoned, and then it just goes to building permits and works with the city. Under planned development, there's three steps. We're at the middle step. This is the preliminary plan, and this requires planning commission recommendation. They've made recommendations with a number of conditions, council approval, which we're asking for tonight, and then it goes to the voters for uh, your vote. If you approve it, if the city of Mentor, the community of Mentor approves it, then uh, this zoning takes place, but development cannot happen uh, until there's a final development plan stage. So there's a new next last stage. And at that stage, we bring in very detailed plans of the buildings, of the architecture, of the materials, of the parking, of the landscape, all those components. Uh, we have <coughs> planning commission meeting, public's <coughs> invited, it's a public meeting, planning commission reviews it, city reviews it to make sure it matches the intent of what we show you for the vote, what we've shown city council and agreed to as part of this plan. So. <coughs> There is a next stage, so we want to reassure everyone that Planning Commission Council will get to review this, and city staff, and all of you will get to review the details uh, moving forward after rezoning approval, should we be fortunate enough to get uh, approval from city council, <laughs> approval from you uh, at a, a popular vote. So let me have Lori come up and talk about the traffic study. Thanks, Chris. Uh, my name's Lori Adams. I'm with DGL Consulting Engineers. I'm the managing principal of that firm, and I've been a traffic engineer for just almost 34 years. Um, this is a, my job here is to take the information that Chris just shared with you, which is all of the 
the preliminary details of what they would like to build and figure out what, what does that mean in terms of the traffic it'll generate and what will it what will be the impact on the roads that you already have. Uh, we have counted traffic. Uh, we, we did that back uh, in October and uh, we know that there's already some issues with traffic. Uh, Johnny Cake Ridge and Center Street have already has some issues. Um, we've identified that there's some turn lanes that are needed that already exist today. We already know that um, the interchange, um, while it works well right now as the traffic grows, even without any development, this development or the Cleveland Clinic, that would, you know, that, that interchange is going to need some work at some point. So those things have been identified. And we also know that with the traffic that's going to be generated by a development such as this, uh, new things are going to have to be built. Some turn lanes will need to be built. Some new signals will be installed. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll have to add their, a signal component to the Norton Parkway intersection uh, for the development. There'll be a new, there will be a new uh, signal closer to the interstate. Um, other improvements to Johnny Cake Ridge will be required. Um, and the development team is willing to work with the city and figure out what those are going to be. We have completed a preliminary traffic impact study, uh, which the city is uh, just beginning to review. And um, the team is willing to sit down and discuss those things. Um, you know, when the, when the plan gets, if the plan gets approved and moves forward, um, they're ready to address whatever traffic concerns there may be. And, and, and Lori, your address for the record, please. My address is 3455 Briarfield Boulevard, Maumee, Ohio. Thank you, Lori. And just maybe to make a finer point on, on that, we are committed, the Bolton family is committed to addressing the, the traffic issues as part of this project should it move forward. And we understand that we need to be part of the solution. And I don't think I ever said my address, I apologize. Um, so Chris Herman, Principal MKSK 462 <laughs> South Ludlow Alley, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you. Is that the completing your applicant presentation? Thank you. I, I, thank you. I'm done, thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this item? Sir? Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and please speak into the microphone as this meeting is being recorded and televised. My name's John Dimitru. I live at 7439 Lauren J. Drive in Menor. I've lived there since 1985. I've been a Menor resident since 1977. Like most Menor residents, especially long-term residents. As Mr. Bolton said, change is very difficult to accept. We don't like to see this be a big parkland for the rest of our lives, but uh, <clears throat> change is inevitable. And I just wanted to encourage city council to do whatever they can possibly do to make this plan come to fruition, because I think it's a rare day when any private landowner offers to work with a good organization like the Land Conservancy to preserve 70 acres of beautiful land just for the enjoyment of the citizens of Menor and the surrounding communities. I know there's traffic issues, and I know there's sewers, <coughs> sewage issues, and everything else that has to be figured out, but I simply wanted to come out in favor of what I think is a well-balanced development plan, and uh, I don't like ordinarily any rezonings, but this one seems to be thought out and seems to be the best possible use for the property. So I hope we can work it out because that's 69 acres just for comparison purposes is bigger than the entire Garfield Park, <laughs> which is the nearest recreational area. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this item? <coughs> is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to this item? Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and please speak into the microphone as this meeting is being recorded and televised.
Gentlemen of the council, thank you very much. My name is Bob Quayle. I live at 8527 Johnny Cake Ridge Road. And um, by the way, this is not a sympathy appeal here. I just had to have my ankle operated up. And Bruce, I'd like to thank you for your service. Most people think I'm crazy because I'm a Marine. You are crazier than I am, sir. All right? I was in once, and um, Marine, uh, submarines look good in the rearview mirror. That being said, by the way, before we go any further, most of you people, I think, are aware of what happened tonight. Say a prayer tonight. Iraq uh, was attacked. I mean, one of our locations, Iraq, was attacked by uh, Iran today. So please say a prayer for those of us who, you know what I mean. By the way, I lived in the Mideast. Salam Alaikum. Anyway, um, first of all, I, uh, this is really not wanted. It's not good for the city of Metro. First of all, uh, I was a member, I am a member of the, you know, I, I support the Western Reserve land. I started with the Grand River Association. I used to go out there when I had a body every May and clean up the river. Um, it's nice that it's a piece of property, I understand. But these ancient trees are very fragile. And you can't dig up around them. You have to give them a lot of space. You start bulldozing near them, and they will eventually not be ancient trees. They will be history. Now. This is not good for Mentor. It's a glorified, there's these multi-use areas all over the place. There's one on the west side, there's Legacy <laughs> Village, there's a couple of them down by Mentor. And the ones in Mentor, the one in Westlake, um, they're surrounded by 360 population with incomes that are quite a bit higher than what we have around here. We have 190, maybe 200 degrees of circle that you're gonna recruit from. All right, now the other thing is you cannot, by, by the way, I need to say something, Bruce. At the last meeting, I was almost a hot torpedo. I'm doing my darndest, and I did it there, to not become a hot torpedo here. I'm 76 years old, I worry about our grandchildren. Change is good. How do you change an abandoned structure, i.e. Western 84, Sears, et cetera, back into green space. How do you do that? How do you do that? Now, you know, we have these grandiose plans come up all over Northeast Ohio. Hey, 40 years ago, Randall Park Mall was the <coughs> largest mall in the world with an attached or a on location 15 story luxury hotel. Where is that now? The, uh, the large, I know you're saying this is multi-use, but it's really a glorified business development and a little shopping center. We don't need that. I mean, who's going to pay? He said, we're, we're committed. Committed doesn't say, I'll write a check for that. They're committed. They're not paying. He's very, by the way, he's very good at words. Um, hang on. I've got notes. By the way, uh, I also would like to leave for you people the plane dealer A section from... Uh, December 22nd, a greener Cleveland. Neighborhoods would benefit from new parks. Yes, we're not Cleveland, nor do we want to be. All right, now, I live right where uh, you want the access road from 84, you know, the diversion road, would come right into my picture window. It's my house, my picture window. I don't like those lights coming in. Should I stand up there naked and let the fact that there's an ugly 76-year-old guy standing there naked throw up so they can use the other access road? Come on. You laugh. This is my house. This is my living room those lights are coming into. And right where you're taking them out is the best stands of pines on the whole property on the south side. <coughs> Traffic. Uh, Ma'am, we have traffic. It's a mess. It's a parking lot. Uh, it's going to get worse. Who is going to pay for the expansion? Not the committed. I haven't heard him say, here's the check. Um, by the way, here's a very important thing. 
the National Board of Realtors said that if your property is within 600 feet of a green space, and don't give me the half green space here, it could be up to 19% of additional value. Are you going to pay me for my loss of 19% of my Bruce, value? Bruce, Bruce, he can speak into the microphone, please, and to I counsel. asked the gentleman if he's going to pay me for the 19% that I'm going to lose my value when he puts his access road right into my picture window. This is not good. Last, a little under two years ago, we voted down another development. Mr. Bolton, I can understand your desire to, to clean it up and get out of town for your family. I'm not that far behind you. I'm doing the same thing. And I'm Mr. worried Quail, about my family. Mr. Quail, yes. would you direct your comments to counsel? Okay, there is I, I no apologize. criticism of individuals permitted. Okay, I apologize. I also want to state that it's normally four minutes. Okay. I've extended you. Uh, you are a Marine. But please, if you could. Okay, I'll wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I thank you for the thing. I hope you do the right thing. The right thing is for the citizens of Menor. Not, not for Mr. Bolton, not for this guy behind me. Anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name and address, ma'am. Karen Hammock. Hello, Bruce Landig. Hi. I went to school with you. I don't know if you remember me. I was Karen Smith. That's right. I do oh, remember are you. you. I'm fine. <laughs> I met your what, lovely wife today. Thank um, you. I have lived at Menor 60 years. Can you speak up? Yes. I, okay. We'll get, the, we'll get the teacher voice out. I am a teacher in Wycliffe. Um, I have lived in Menor 60 years since I was three years old. We currently live at 8497 Jenny Cake Ridge Road, which is right across from Bolton's Farm. Um, when we moved in there 30 years ago, I lived with my life partner. The Boltons welcomed us when my daughters went over to feed the horses. My daughters are now 40 and 37, and I have six grandchildren. We were taken aback when we talked to Mr. Bill Lennon, who happens to, well, he's a realty, everybody knows that. He is, was also my youngest daughter's third grade teacher. We were very surprised to find out that they were putting homes across from us and a mixed use real, realty, I mean, excuse me, real tell, retail. Um, I'm breathing. <laughs> the last meeting I couldn't come to because I had to attend something for my grandson. We're concerned about the traffic that's coming through there. People see the hill now and think they're in farm country. They go 90 miles an hour. We lost a neighbor of 15 years and his young wife and their three toddler, grandchildren, three toddler children because someone tried to turn around their yard and almost killed one of their children. Seven years ago, I don't know if Mr. Bolton himself knows, but uh, someone over at Bolton's farm, because they were having water problems, they pumped water across the street on Route 84. We had to call the police because they were flooding the yards. One of our neighbors, three doors down, had their garage flooded and had to, and they had just moved in not long before that happened. We live on land when we when land was originally part of Garfield's land. When we moved under our home 30 years ago, we found out we had down spots connected to sanitary sewers. We had to call a company in. Unfortunately, we couldn't sue the previous owners. Uh, one of the gentlemen who was in that company, which is Lake County Sewer, had said that he was one of the people who put the original sewers in when they went from septic to sewer. So those are the original sewers that are under our land. There's also a stream running under our land. At one point, um, Partridge Grand River ran through our land. 
when President Garfield lived there. One minute. Thank you, Bruce. Um, we're concerned about the septic. We're concerned about the sewage. We're concerned about somebody coming out in, in the middle of our drive, coming into our driveway. It's gotten really bad. So we're very, very concerned about that and concerned about we won't be able to sell our home. Because we're both in our 60s, the girls are gone. And, you know, one day we'd like to sell the home. But we're very concerned about that. And I know that they're trying to do something wonderful because Boltons are wonderful people. And I know the history of that farm. And they were so kind. When my daughters went over to, to feed those horses before those hills were put in, their family came over and welcomed us to that area. My heart is in manor. And I don't want to see this happen. Thank you. Ma'am, speaking against, and I would encourage you to not uh, repeat if you have the same items and use your four minutes wisely. Please state your name and address. Thank you. My name is Mary Pumper. I live at 7954 Walcott Way in Newell Creek. I also am a teacher. Um, I'm going to just state that this has been very concerning on very many, a lot of levels. Um, the conservation area, what's being conserved is about 69 or 70 acres out of 186.53. That's about 37%. That's not a whole lot. The rest of it is being developed. And at risk of being repetitive, and I'm not going to do that, I completely agree with what has been said before. Um, I am concerned, um, Bob, I believe, is absolutely correct. It is a fact that if you... Um, bulldoze close to these trees, they will die. That is a fact. Um, my, one of my very deep concerns is if there is a hotel, as was talked about, um, and all of the very densely packed development that I'm seeing in these plans, I'm also worried about um, crime. I'm worried about um, what that type of thing brings into all of our neighboring areas. We have a lot of young families. Um, I know that where there are these hotels and, and retail and that some sort of, of thing that close to um, residential areas, there is an increase in crime. And I do um, worry about that. We do have some break-ins in the Newell Creek area, and I believe that this will increase it. Um, the fact that the traffic is going to go up, as has been said before, as, as has been said, um, is a huge concern. The city of Menor is beginning to look like a hodgepodge of just, it, it's an eyesore. I'm sorry to say that. I've lived in Menor for years. I'm actually not a lifelong Menor resident. Um, I've been transplanted from the west side. Um, I've loved raising my daughters here. However, I'm looking at it as time is going on. It's, it's really, I think, taking a turn for the worse. Um, there's a lot of areas. There's vacant strip malls. There's the Great Lakes Mall. All of that. I don't see anything that really is coming good out of that. So um, I'm worried about it. If the Planning Commission has some sort of a cohesive plan for how men are should look, that's one thing, but I don't think there is one, as I can see with these little hodgepodge of developments. It seems as every little square inch of manor has to be developed. Um, I think you need to think about that. Um, I think if this whole area was planned as a conservation area, and we can X all of the tightly packed buildings and residential area, if we can get rid of that, maybe that would be something we can consider. And I can see that my time is up. Um, that's all I want to say. Please think about what this is doing to the residents who are taxpayers who are going to be most affected by this. Thank you. Thank you. I have another uh, person who is registered to speak against, Deborah McCauley. Hello, Deborah McCauley of 6730 Farmingdale Lane, mentor. Woo -hoo. A um, couple of the comments that I had have already been addressed, but can I address the council at, as, at large? How do I? I want to know when will the voters actually be able to 
cast a vote? At what time frame are we looking at here? Well, we usually we just listen to you, and I think we'll address that later, but it's the March 17th primary date. Okay, um, I do represent uh, Men Are Citizens for Responsible Zoning. Uh, it's an open political action committee. If anybody would um, like to take it over or help me, it's um, there. I'm thinking that the people that live, I live off of 306 uh, near Lake Catholic, so it doesn't impact me as greatly, but I'm hoping that someone that lives closer to that area may be interested. Uh, I'll certainly do my very best to help. Um, in terms of the traffic studies, you're probably only studying six, or, yeah, 615 and 84. The impact on Route 306 is gonna be pretty big because people like me are gonna to try to avoid that area and get off at a different exit. So um, I, is that something that the traffic, who's the traffic person that I talked to? Well, just make later? your comments and okay. I think they'll have a chance to respond. Yes, um, I am concerned if, if they look at the other freeway exits and how it will impact other major streets in our area. Um, I question the, the term improvement. Uh, you're talking about dismantling an already built bridge, making it wider. You need to widen Route 84 to accommodate all of this traffic. H how is that improving anything in this city? Um, and uh, yeah, lastly, um, I'll end with my favorite subject, which is animals. Um, the eagles that were in the front yard belong to another uh, land of across the street from the freeway that I fought against in 2017. And the minor voters did say, eh, -eh. So um, that was voted down. And that's only four acres as opposed to 186. So I just ask that our minor voters, if we have the opportunity, that you see fit to keep this zoned as C1 conservation. Thank you. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Anyone else for this item? Yes, ma'am. Bonnie Braley, 7269 Beechwood, Menor. My question is if the Menor residents vote this down, what is plan B? I'll let the applicant respond to that later. Okay, and then I guess it also would, is, is plan B worse than plan A? So that'll be addressed. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? Sir. Yeah. Seven six six one, Center Street, Menor, Ohio. Um, I guess mine's more in question. Is the uh, the density? What I'm I'm most concerned about is the retail. Uh, you know, I'm, everybody's talked to you about traffic. I used to work at Lubrizol. I did a lot of planning, a lot of stuff over the years. But that seems extensive for that type of property <coughs> in that area. Uh, so if there's any way to maybe uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, positive as what's going to go in the beginning. We never talked phases here, phase one, phase two, phase three. It's a lot of money. It's going to be phases. But that density of that area of, of that, the hotel, doesn't really bother me too bad. But just that overall density, you guys are explaining the walking areas and stuff like that. But that's really running out to the traffic. It'd be really nice to see that go into housing and that whole area, the conservation area, the housing, because the housing, the people, of course, will pull out, go to work. It won't be that uh, dense when you, you put homes in. But you add that other stuff, especially by that interchange. That, and it's really, I don't care what we do, uh, looking at the entrance and exits of that area, and coming out onto uh, that area is gonna be very difficult. Uh, but I really, that's the only thing I'm gonna say. I, I'm really against that overall density of all the, all the uh, complex of the buildings and stuff, the retail. We really don't need no additional retail. 
I appreciate that. Sir, could you repeat your name, please? Robert Manross, 7661 Center. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak in opposition for this item? Now, there were a number of questions, and once the public hearing is closed, the second legislative items, we will consider legislation, and the applicant will then have an opportunity to respond to some of those questions. So again, is there anyone else to speak in opposition? Council is in receipt of all correspondence and emails received pertaining to this matter. This public hearing is adjourned. New legislation, ordinance number 20-0001. An ordinance amending the codified ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended and the official zoning map by rezoning of approximately 8.126 acres of land from R2 single family residential district to RVG Green RVG Village Green District at 7640 Lakeshore Boulevard and declaring an emergency. Council, what is your pleasure? Questions? Discussion? Move to suspend. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marm? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? No. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? No. Ordinance number 20-0002 has passed. 001. 001, excuse me, has, has been approved. Ordinance number 20-0002. An ordinance amending the codified ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended and the official zoning map by rezoning of approximately 186.53 acres from C1 Conservation and R4 Single Family Residential Districts to the PMUD Planned Mixed Use Development Overlay District for land adjacent to the south side of Johnny Cake Ridge Road and the east side of Center Street and extending to the village of Kirtland Hills Border including permanent parcel number 16A01100000010 0020000030040014001400150170 and 16A01300016017 and 0210 by MKSK and Bolton Properties Limited and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippiak, comments on this legislation? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I guess I would just start off by saying that one of the virtues of our uh, PUD district as an overlay is that it does have the, <coughs> the benefit of being able to go to in front of the people and, and they will decide as a community whether or not this is good for us. I. Uh, uh, I did want to thank the members of the Bolton family and their representatives. Uh, the bit extraordinarily cooperative process here. Um, obviously, the family has been very highly regarded in our community for many, many years, and we. Uh, it's, it's not often that we're able to work uh, as as well and get as much of the information and detail that we need in a timely basis. So we do appreciate that, whatever the outcome is. Um, Guess the only other information I would would offer is that uh, is there, it, there we have had multiple public meetings and council and the administration work very closely with in deliberating over uh, final plans here. We believe that we're providing uh, a, a very uh, nice uh, opportunity for the community. Um, one of the things that this represents to us that we like, I and mean, again, I think someone pointed out during the public hearing comments that we don't know what the alternatives might be down in the future, but we do know that uh, the Bolton family intends to provide something that would be unique and high caliber in this community. And uh, that has, that certainly has appeal. I think council, obviously council will have many opportunities going forward 
to fashion this uh, to its liking through the final approval plan if, in fact, the voters and council tonight moves this forward. Uh, we will be working very closely uh, with you on that. I have uh, full confidence that we will be able to manage the traffic issues in the area. Developments like this in the Cleveland Clinic may actually provide us with the opportunity we need to clean up some of the existing issues that are there now, much like we're able to resolve uh, storm drainage issues that when, when projects like this arise. Um, so we will look forward to working closely on, on those as they go forward and working closely with the neighbors should this get approved. Um, because with any project like this, uh, a, a property that has been uh, in uh, uh, conservation, uh, private property use, and pretty unassuming for as many years as this had, and a change which is inevitable does create some issues that we will look to mitigate uh, as much as possible. So we are um, looking forward to the opportunity of working with the um, conservation, working in the, within the conservation area and uh, with Western Reserve on the development of that property. Um, it obviously has appeal for a lot of our residents and that has been expressed. Again, not knowing what alternatives on that property are, I can certainly at least say that that would be something that we would look forward to in council. Certainly uh, familiar with the costs associated because uh, it's not too dissimilar from our Springbrook Meadows Park uh, recently where we have many, many millions of dollars invested in that. This is an opportunity for the community to take advantage of that at, uh, at almost no cost. So um, we're happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Um, Ms. Mitchell has uh, done a fantastic job of trying to go over and, and uh, provide every detail possible to help you make an informed decision and to help fashion conditions and stipulations that we think are going to be very important for this to move forward um, if, in fact, you vote for it. And um, we're happy to elaborate on any item that may have been touched on this evening or in the past. Council, I intend to give the applicant an opportunity to respond to some of the public's questions and comments, but first, uh, discussion on Mr. Flippiak's comments or further questions for the administration? No questions of the administration, but uh, it might be worthwhile to point out that, you know, it was brought up about Newell Creek in the past, which I wasn't on council at the time, but I know so several council people were and I know throughout all the meetings we've had was to rectify the problems we had concerning the development of Newell Creek that a lot of the residents don't understand that legally we really can't prevent people from developing their own property. We, we through the City of Mentor, the Planning Commission, the Council, look for these type of meetings, these type of classifications using the code and and the uh, ordinances to follow so that we can guide the development of those properties under our control. As it turned out with Newell Creek, as my understanding was, we lost that control because of the fact that it went to, it, when it's turned down by the residents, for example, it goes to the courts. The court then tells us, the city and the populace, what can be built there or not built there. In that fact, we kind of lose control to a certain degree. I think it's beneficial that we have the control that we have through our code and ordinances to guide that design. And it, the, it's not something that, you know, is going to happen even tonight, even if it's approved tonight. The fact is it still goes to final, which means the developer has to come back in and give, give us all the current, all the facts of the development issues of materials and so on of what's going to happen on that property. So it's still subject to change again. So I, I just think it wanted the public to know that it's, you know, we don't take this lightly that, you know, but we also understand we can't prevent development there. It's how we want to go about it. We let, prefer to maintain control, is my point of view. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes, Councilman Dodd. Um, I, I don't know if you would mind if I assisted the residents who asked some questions to ask the administration and maybe Mr. Zeman, the questions that the residents asked, and maybe they could answer some of those questions that they came to up the, with. To the applicant? Yes. Would the applicant come to the microphone, please? Yes, sir. 
I'd like to make the public aware of the situation with the Bolton House. Uh, the planning put in a condition. Uh, could you explain that condition of the situation? There's a lot of people concerned about the preservation, and, and the planning came up, and you guys came up with a sort of a good idea on our situation with that. We obviously, it, it's an important part of this plan. Uh, it's important to the Bolton family. It's important to the team. Um, so we are working as part of this, and we come back from final development plan on uh, preserving it and having a use that's uh, added both this development and to the maintenance and long-term viability of the house. Um, but we do always have to be aware of the realities uh, long-term. And so uh, we put a condition in if there ever got to a point where we were not able to preserve the house uh, because of the cost and not finding a viable use that we would uh, agree to a 60 day period of discussions with the city uh, and any interested parties on how to uh, protect it. And, and Thank you. Um, my next question that uh, someone asked, um, the stormwater and sewer situation and the water uh, pretty much self-contained into the property in the development, I would guess we could ask Mr. Swigger uh, if he has any opinion on that, just to give the residents some relief on it's going to have storm sewers, it's going to have sanitary, it's going to have water. Correct. Uh, as far as the stormwater um, uh, control or detention will be, will be done on site, uh, we'll be trying to direct as much water uh, from this development to the west to the uh, uh, um, detention basin uh, at Garfield and N84. So that's one of our um, one of our uh, uh, goals is to do that, to, to split as much of that off. Uh, um, as far as sanitary, that will all have to go through the Lake County Department of Utilities, but it will all be um, sewered, um, and that, uh, that sewage will, will go to the, uh, the Mentor uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, so the, the Aqua Ohio will serve the property with water, but uh, all of those things are, are standard um, when when developing property, and we have a lot of control over how that happens. Um, so as far as the those issues, traffic is always uh, is always an issue with development. And it's always studied, and this is uh, they started off with a, a pretty thorough um, a preliminary traffic uh, study. It did not include State Route 306 when it was brought up, so uh, maybe that's something they can. They can Thank you. Um, I guess this would be the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. Um, I think one of the res residents mentioned that this, the trees will die. Um, right. Is there a certain distance or safe distance that you can stay away from a preserved 69 acres area like that? Is that, is that in the plan? Yes, it is in the conservation planning that was done. None of the ancient trees will be threatened even remotely by the development. But those statements were true, that if you bulldoze or develop too close to a mature tree, it will jeopardize that tree's life. But the conservation planning on this particular preserve has been done to preserve the ancient trees by several hundred to 400 to, to even in some cases over well over 1,000 or 2,000 feet from any impact whatsoever. So I'm not worried about it at all. Our conservation planning team's not worried about it, but that is a real thing that would be a risk if the development got too close to those trees. Thank you. Um, I guess a question on the density. Uh, one, of the, what, one of the residents, if you could comment on the density and the reason you feel that the density is correct for that property. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, I guess first thing it's important to point out that your, the city's code basically allows a maximum density in a PMUD of eight units an acre. Uh, what we're proposing here uh, is just at, or maybe a little under four units an acre, so we're at half of what's permitted by code. Uh, there is always new development, particularly mixed use, a balance. You need to have enough people and units to help support uh, some of that retail that we're trying to, to bring into this and also just to provide some of the liveliness and livelihood of the neighborhood. So we are not trying to overcrowd or saturate the site. Um, we are trying to get a balance of a very walkable community that people want to live in that also supports the uses that we're trying to uh, encourage in this location. Thank you. 
nobody else. I have some. So do I, but let, okay. let's just open it up. Others on council that uh, have specific questions for either the applicant or the administration? Mr. President. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, young lady in the aqua had asked uh, about plan B on this uh, development plan. If this doesn't pass through the voters, um, what's the plan B? We do not. We've put all our eggs in this. We do not have a plan B. This is what we are pursuing. Obviously, a, a lot of work that's gone into all this, including uh, with the Western Reserve and the conservation area. All these things are contingent on this uh, effort. So uh, without this resenting, without this moving forward, uh, then all that starts all over again. And because I think Councilman Krieger did a, an excellent job outlining what happened on the other side of 615. Um, so it's, it, it's a concern. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Matt, go get him. Let's see if Bruce has anybody else. Yeah. Anyone else on council? Questions? Mr. President? Councilman um, Donovan. I'd like to uh, direct this at Law Director uh, Zeman. We have a couple of conditions that we would like to incorporate and a couple of amendments that we would like to make. And I'd like Mr. Zeman to go through them and uh, read them off and let us know what. Uh, and then we're going to vote on them. <coughs> yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President you. and members of council. Uh, and this sort of dovetails off of the work session a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, uh, attached as Exhibit B to Ordinance uh, 002 um, is the uh, site development plan at the work session, actually well, before the work session, but it was formally presented to council at the work session, was a revised uh, site development plan. Um, it's labeled by the applicant as figure 5-1. The, the, the change from what's currently attached to 002 is in the southeast corner, excuse me, the northeast corner of sub-area uh, A. The, what they've called estate lots have been enlarged um, from, what was, from what's currently attached to the ordinance. So if council desires to substitute the revised um, Figure 5.1 uh, as Exhibit B, there should be a motion to amend in that respect. And related to that, perhaps this could be one motion if council desires. Um, exhibit, current Exhibit B2 ex attached to Ordinance 002, uh, that's just a, sort of a zoom in, uh, if you will, on subarea A. It also sh it reflects the larger estate lots uh, in the northeast corner. And for council's benefit, it's a... Uh, that's this plan, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the, the larger one. So that would be uh, the first potential amendment if council wants to make sure that those estate lots are actually larger than what's currently uh, attached to the, uh, the ordinance. Uh, Mr. President, if you want to go through these one at a time and, and poll council. Or... Well, why don't you present all the amendments, and then we can either bundle them or take them individually at right. council's pleasure. All right. Um, because some of these would require me to read them into the record. I don't know what your preference is, Mr. President. Certainly, re read them into the record. Right, thank you. Uh, along with that uh, revision to exhibits B and B2 in the current conditions at paragraph one, there's references to plans that were submitted on November 25th of last year. Uh, I think that adding some language at the end of those sentences, sentences to reflect that the exhibits as amended will clarify any confusion that may potentially be caused with current condition number one. Uh, current condition number three, um, that uh, that condition pertains to there not there, there being a limited use along uh, the ground level uh, and what would be the extended Norton Parkway. Uh, this uh, proposed amendment came from the applicant. I think that some members of council were, were interested in uh, entertaining it as well. So the current condition, the current language is the buildings proposed along Norton Parkway entry corridor within subarea B shall be ground floor retail with the allowance for smaller, small office, comma. The new language would state residential amenity spaces and limited <laughs> ancillary uses consistent with and supportive of residential use, including lobby space, common areas, resident fitness center, et cetera, end of the new language. And then the current language would be residential. The new word units would be imposed. 
and then it would continue with the current language, shall only be permitted above office retail, and then that would continue as, as current. So that would be a modified condition number three. Uh, the next uh, potential modified condition would be number 17. Um, again, I believe that this, this um, um, came from the applicant um, and was discussed during the work session. The current language for condition 17 states in subarea B or subarea C, parking shortages due to the shared parking concept shall be resolved by introducing structured parking. The new language would state or via other remedies acceptable upon final approval of an amendment to the development plan. I believe that there was a discussion relative to uh, prohibiting any use of State Route 84, Johnny Cake Ridge, for construction or haul roads. That would take the form of a brand new condition, number 19, which would state, construction and haul roads shall not utilize Johnny Cake Ridge Road, SR 84, and may only utilize Center Street, SR 615, as approved by the city manager. Uh, there was discussion as well about uh, council reserving to itself jurisdiction to review any potential future amendments to the approved development plan. Uh, that would take the form of condition num a new condition number 20 and proposed language would state changes to the approved preliminary and or final development plans and or conditions shall require council review and an amendment to ordinance number 20-002 after review and recommendation by the municipal, municipal planning commission. Uh, finally, what I have in my notes, Council, uh, is a potential new, or new condition number 21 uh, that addresses other uses in subarea C. Uh, it would state there shall be no residential or retail uses in subarea C. Uh, I believe uh, that may be everything. If I'm missing something, um, I, can get, I can get drafting. Okay. Um I think I'll summarize these uh, conditions, revisions, and new conditions, and then uh, for further discussion to see if council wants to entertain each one or all or none. Mr. President? Yes, Councilman Martin. I'd like to hear from the administration because that's what they're paid to do, is 30 experts. That's why we hired Mr. Flipiak, Ms. Mitchell. Ms. Mitchell. Are you prepared to go one by one at this particular time? Well, uh, we, Mr. President. Certainly. Um, I think we're generally uh, agreeable to uh, most of the commit conditions. I mean, ostensibly most of these conditions were either uh, resulted uh, either from council's initiative or the administration's initiative or planning commission. I would want to draw your attention to one, however, because in the instrument because of time limits we didn't really get a chance to get into this during the work session immediately prior to council but regarding condition three um, this came as recently as today and uh, the addition of the language that include that allows the ground floor uh, space along uh, sub area B to be utilized for uh, originally the intention was to uh, well, the original uh, provision provided that the building proposed along Norton Parkway corridor <laughs> shall be ground floor retail with allowance for small office. The purpose behind that was to provide a, a clear demonstration that um, that corridor was going to provide some type of uh, vi vitality in terms of um, retail space or some services that the general public could look forward to taking advantage of. It was one of the areas that I think provides um, the most interest for those who won't be living there or perhaps not using the conservation area for recreation purposes. In our opinion, and again, we didn't have a lot of time to debate this, and I, and I would invite council to at least look to give it some consideration, in our opinion that the, the addition of allowances that are predominantly residential amenities kind of undermines the whole purpose of that. Um, not to say that they won't attempt to develop it as retail, I think that's the intent, but if it doesn't work out and it ends up being uh, auxiliary space utilized for residential purposes, that doesn't provide a whole lot of things for the, for the public to, to uh, take advantage of. Um, we looked at this obviously as uh, four distinct areas, the one being primarily residential, uh, one being primarily 
commercial professional, and then of course the conservation area. The fourth sub area B being that which would provide some level of interest that the public can go to and shop and 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 uh, participate in a, at a community level. Um, if this doesn't materialize as retail or, or other uh, space that could be visited by the public, somewhat undermines the that that benefit. So whether or not that's that's important, and live certainly your prerogative to decide. But I do think that that changes the meaning of that substantially. Mr. President, I agree with uh, Mr. Filippi. I caught that too. It, it does totally deviate from if if you start using that as workout centers, card rooms, playrooms for the residential people above. The public people who are doing their walk around neighborhood aren't having don't have the ability to use those those uh, those areas that may be coffee shops or or the general public or, or the general public right. so on and I totally agree with you and I would uh, like to uh, amend it that way into the into the language if that's okay second yes uh, I think well I, I excuse me but I think mr. Zeman is gonna say what if we don't include that amendment, it would just go back to the original, would it not? Uh, correct. Uh, Council, just for clarity and just so the record's clear, I'm, I would encourage you to take any amendments one by one um, okay. by affirmative motion. So if there's no amend, amend, if there's no motion in the second to amend condition number three, then it just mm -hmm. stands as currently written in, in mm -hmm. the ordinance. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing Councilman Donovan say he would not be in favor in, of amending condition number three. Correct. Okay. Further. Yes, Councilman Moore. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mr. Mr. President, at, at any point in time, I'd love to, there are a couple of thoughts I'd love to share, but don't know when that's appropriate to. Okay. Uh, on that particular point, I guess maybe a little background. We had a conversation with the Planning Commission about this, and the condition was kind of created, um, I think, the final wording afterwards. One discussion we had, our concern without something in there, I understand we may have gone too far, was we just want to make sure that it wasn't precluding, because with residential above, we have to have a way to get people up there. And the way it was originally worded, it made it sound like there's no way to have residential access on the ground floor and how do we get people up? Because there's going to be a residential use on the foundation of some of these buildings because you got to have a lobby and you got to have access up. So we were concerned the way it was written before, it was basically precluding what we were all trying to get, which is residential above. So, so Mr. this, Herman, is, our, this is our attempt to try to make sure we You're really that. saying access, not amenities. Yes, I mean, I think we threw amenities because we thought if there was a, a again, I understand the concern. We weren't trying to say we're going to replace the, the frontage along this. We were trying to say if there was a workout room or some kind of uh, related piece that was an amenity that, again, was transparent and active, that might not be a bad thing in this, uh, along the street. But I, I do understand it. it does come across as like we could replace the whole thing. That's not the intent. It was just to make sure we could get the residential piece. Okay. Mr. President? Kathy? Um, What's your take on that? Um, would that be something that would go to planning and then we could review it and approve it or disapprove it? I, you just don't want to give an open run on the, on the lower level and have them start adding for the residents below, workout well, rooms, lobbies, things like that. So that that'll come in front of planning anyway, correct? Right, so if any residential was, was proposed above the first, sorry, above uh, the retail, Component, uh, it would have to go through the uh, final development plan review process. So it would it would still be subject to everybody's review. Um, Mr. Flipiak, <laughs> but I consider your language almost it has to be in there, and I don't see a problem with that putting that language in there because it's going to come to planning anyway. It just gives us another an, another gateway. I don't I don't I don't feel you have a problem with that. No. Okay. No. I'd say we amend it the way you said it. Well, I think what we were suggesting is that not, the, not change the, it, not yeah, change the, it, okay. right. not amend okay. it. I, I, I would point out, though, uh, Council, that uh, there is uh, a slight change that is incorporated into your ordinance that departs slightly from what the Planning Commission approved in number three, which I think the law director uh, added. And I don't recall, Mr. Zeman, you draw their, drew their attention to that already. Uh, no, it's a... Uh, I believe the administration had proposed some additional uh, modifications. Um, Ordinance 002 already incorporates those, but obviously if the council um, wants to further amend those conditions, it's, it's the prerogative to do so. 
I have a question for the administration. Is access a problem? Is it implied? Is it already built in? I, I would certainly look at it that way, Mr. Landig. I, I don't really view, I think it's, it, I think it's obvious that we would probably have to make that accommodation in some manner. I, I really don't see that as something that needs to be That's explicitly stated any more than we would necessarily have to state that they have to comply with all of the provisions of the code. They're going to have access, they're probably going to need access from a fire code standpoint on that first floor. Correct. Um, yeah. I, I think that, that, that where we would probably uh, part ways in terms of, of uh, um, being content with the end result would be if that access turned out to be the entire and sole use of, of that space, which I don't think that they're intending right now by at least with respect to guaranteeing that access. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it sounds like uh, number three could be just modified for access. It could be left as is, but because access is probably implied. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. So there's no need to change three. Mm -hmm. Can we at least add the word residential access to that? Uh, Mr. President, I, 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 I never read it that way myself, and I'm pretty, pretty paranoid. <laughs> so, uh, so, so yeah, I, I think you can have a, a nice little lobby so that uh, your residents can access it. I, I think to uh, yeah, I think to council and to the administration's point, the the idea that you know maybe you would have ground floor daycare, you know workspace, things of that nature. Um, I, I I don't know ground floor retail with allowance for small small office. It's it's currently what it is. I don't know if that precludes absolutely further amendments if there's a restaurant use or things of that nature. I'm just I'm not saying it should be that way. I'm just suggesting it. But just so the council understands that, you know, those are permitted uses in the PMUD. And so if there's an opportunity to get a restaurant use on the ground level and this, on this, you know, that, that would be potentially the subject of a future amendment. So um, I think that's the type of thing where uh, the PMUD uh, district regulations does, a, does allow for some flexibility in the future if, if the right uses materialize. And certainly not a substantial change. I, I would not make that decision. <laughs> uh, what's your pleasure, Council, on amendment, uh, the amendment to uh, condition three? Leave as is without, without the added language, correct? Isn't that what we talked about? Well, if there's no motion. Mr. President. There's no motion, so. Okay. All right. Without a motion, um, Mr. Flipiak. Yeah, Mr. President, I, I, I certainly think we have no objections to just stating for the record here tonight that the city would not consider access, residential access as uh, a departure from, from, from this provision. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can we address... Uh, the condition number one, which was revising for the exhibits that were given to us tonight. Who do approve? Well, um, Mr. President, yes. just in, in terms of um, um, order, um, I think substituting revised exhibit B and B2 and, and, and further am and amending condition number one at paragraph one to state, you know, as amended uh, would be a proper motion. So moved. President. I have a motion. Yes. Say the law director reread. Yeah. Each. Perfect. Clarify, Mr. Law Director. Uh, yes. Um, there's really no way to, to because they're they're visual exhibits. I can't really uh, do much except show you the visual exhibits. Um, again, the revised um, exhibit B would be the figure five one that was submitted by the applicant um, uh, before the council meeting. And again, it just shows the modified estate lots in subarea A in the northeast corner as larger than uh, the current exhibit number B in, a t in ordinance number 002. The revised uh, exhibit B2 is the applicant's figure 5-6. It just zooms in on sub, on sub area A. And again, its modification is that the estate lots 
uh, along with a label as Street E, are, are larger than what's currently attached to Ordinance 002. Um, if council wants to see that, that amended, so those larger lots are included as part of Ordinance 002, then obviously there'd be a motion second, and if it passes, these would simply be substituted for B and B2. Just to avoid any confusion, um, because current condition number one references uh, plans that were submitted dated November 25th, uh, I would recommend that uh, con uh, uh, that current condition number one just at, the, uh, just at the end of the first sentence state as amended. Just keep that new language in there. We have a motion on the floor. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landing. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. The amendment passes on the ordinance for condition one. Uh, let's move to uh, condition 17, which was other parking remedies. Was the language for amendment? Yes, please. Again, uh, current condition number 17 reads, in sub-area B or sub-area C, parking shortages due to the shared parking concept shall be resolved by introducing structured parking. The new language, if amended, would state, or via other remedies acceptable upon final approval of an amendment to the development plan, period. Discussion? Move to approve. Second. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Martin. For the law director. R repeat that again. Yes, sir. In sub-area B or sub-area C, parking shortages due to the shared parking concept shall be resolved by introducing structured parking. The new language would state, or via other remedies acceptable upon final approval of an amendment to the development plan. Which, of course, would have to go in front of planning commission. Uh, and, and the council. And the council. Yeah. If, if. Just want to clarify that make sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. We have a motion and seconded. Uh, call the question. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirstner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Okay, um, condition uh, number 19, could you read the language, Mr. Zeman? Yes, Mr. President, this would, be, this would be new condition number 19. The amendment would state that number 19, construction and haul roads shall not utilize Johnny Cake Ridge Road, State Route 84, and may only utilize Center Street, State Route 615, as approved by the city manager. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Martin. Question for the administration. Administration is comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Does the applicant have any comment? Um, we appreciate the, the ability per city manager that if there were some extenuating reason, we, we completely understand the concern, uh, but just the ability if uh, there's agreement from city staff that there was a reason at some point the need to get access to 84 to have that yeah, limited permission would be great. So we appreciate we don't have an objection to it. It's recording. Relative to emergencies or some such. Or, if, or for some reason we had to, digging the detention pond or something like that, we had to have access from 84. I mean, those kind of things. But not as a regular conveyance for construction. More to approve. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Mr. Zeman, new condition 20. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, that, would, that would read, changes to the approved preliminary and or final development plans and or conditions shall require council review and an amendment to ordinance number 200002 after review and recommendation by the Municipal Planning Commission. Move to approve. Second. Call the roll, Julie. Mr. Kirstner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. And uh, condition number 21, Mr. Zeman. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, that's, that condition would state there shall be no residential or retail uses in sub-area C. Ruth. Discussion. 
Mr. Donovan. No. Chris. Applicant. I may. Thank you. Uh, understand what you're going with that. I just one for context on the, the retail piece. Um, our intent was not to substitute retail in there, but we do see retail as a secondary use is important. So, for example, the office building, having a restaurant in the first floor would be an amenity, I think, that would be very important to have that ability to do, or the hotel, having some kind of restaurant related to it. I, mean, I think we'd be willing to say as a secondary use, but we don't want to exclude retail from the uh, sub AC. Mr. Flampiak, any comment on reasonableness of the applicants? Well, I, I think what they're suggesting is, is probably reasonable because office buildings do need little lunch counters and things like that or, or you know, maybe even a, a prescription service or something in there. But I think you'd want to uh, prohibit it as a primary use mm -hmm. and allow it as a secondary use within uh, uh, a commercial, commercial or professional uh, uh, use. Read that, Can we confer for just a moment? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh boy, the lawyers in there now. What happened now? Council, in other words, within a building that is primarily used for a non-retail uh, purpose. Mm -hmm. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Mr. Flipiak, that as a, as a second use, that would come back to planning and council anyway, correct? It would. It would. In yeah, fact, right. uh, I think the the site development plan would be reviewed by planning commission in any case. So it would be fairly easy to regulate that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Herman. Thank you. So there's some discussion. I think we were wondering if we could limit it to a percentage, like 35 uh, percent, as a maximum of retail and sub C. Like there's some discussions about whether a retail, even if it was standalone as part of this, uh, is important and also thinking about the clinic, uh, Cleveland Clinic on the other side of the street, should that come to fruition, having some ability for a limited amount of retail in sub area C. I would probably say no. Um, Mr. Donovan? I'm sorry, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, I would probably go with the uh, secondary use at this time in the condition. Mm -hmm. Secondary use, does that, uh, question administration, does that come with a percentage? Well, we're, we're making this up as we go here, so. <laughs> um, I, it's really council's prerogative. I think the, the, general, I, the general idea, which I, I think we uh, uh, are supportive of, is that that would be primarily used for office and or professional purposes. You know, maybe even some sort of uh, permissible light industrial application or research facility of some type, all of which um, would probably complement very well uh, things in the area such as the Cleveland Clinic. What I'm thinking of is, is in terms of what would need to serve those purposes probably within, so taking up space within a building that is primarily used for um, a non-retail purpose. Um, it, it, you know, there are a lot of ways that we could do this. If if you were comfortable with, you know, a, a limitation that, or I'm sorry, a provision uh, condition that would limit a percentage of the area that had to be reviewed and approved by you at that time, you could, you could consider that too. Um, you know, a lot of ways to do this. We. If, 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 let me, I'm sorry, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Donovan. If that, if, if that, you, if we put it through the way it is, the way we just talked about, and, it, and it's a deviation from the plan, <clears throat> they would come back to planning anyway and say, hey, we want to put a restaurant in. Um, and then planning would say, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good spot. Why don't we do it that way instead of a percentage? Percentage. Yeah, Let's make it a, sec a secondary. Ultimately, they come to planning and say, hey, we want to put a restaurant in. And planning says yes. Yep, yeah, Councilman. I mean, ultimately, the Planning Commission in this council is going to be the arbiter of what uh, constitutes a reasonable um, substitute for what you're hearing about this evening or what gets approved in that preliminary plan. Um, 
experience for our applicants benefit I experience has shown us that, that our planning commission and, and past council have always been pretty reasonable about finding and approving complementary uses things that enhance the area I think what they're looking to avoid is you, know, you have a couple of several professional buildings there and then the McDonald's goes up next to it um, so I'll leave it up to I think certainly administration's confidence confident in council's discretion on this and um, I think that's a very reasonable way to approach it. Thank you. If, if I may, um, we, we can completely agree, and, and we're fine having coming back to planning commission. I think, once again, our only concern is that if this is taking retail, the permitted uses, and we come back and we have a retail that we can convince planning commission and you all, it makes sense. We just want to make sure this isn't another major deviation that means we have to go back to the voters. I mean, that our, that's our concern in taking it completely out. Are we going to make a use change, I think that starts rising up towards the major deviation. That's our concern. I, I, I think that you would be getting, I'm sorry, Mr. President, I keep jumping in. I think that you would be getting, you'd be getting retail as a secondary, which would not bring you back to a referendum. Again, I, I, I think this council and the commission has yeah. a lot of discretion in, in defining what constitutes uh, a significant departure if if you don't view it as such then I, I think your that method of, of approaching approval is just fine okay if council doesn't see it as a major departure and it fits it fits in then then you're the you're the decision makers in terms of whether it has to go back to the to the voters so it's got to get past them under under any circumstance so I I, I would feel comfortable come on Chris you like that <laughs> we, we trust all you as long as, as it doesn't mean we're going Let's go with that back amendment. to the start. Let's go with that amendment. Uh, if, if I may, can I uh, just clarify? Uh, again, Thomas Coyne, Thompson Hine. Um, so uh, the applicant is uh, fully on board with uh, having to secure approval of both planning commission and council for any primary um, retail use. Uh, could we allow for, number one, ancillary uh, uh, retail use in connection with any office use, mm. uh, and then also um, subject to the express approval of the Planning Commission uh, and the Council additional primary retail use. W we have no plans for that. We're just, this is a long-term project. We're just trying to provide some flexibility and would um, agree to submit the to the discretion of the Council. Mr. President, I think secondary use yeah. gives all the flexibility you need. It's in it, the language is in there. Retail language is in there. So if it's a secondary use, there's any number of retail uses you can come back at. It's not a game changer as far as the plan is concerned, as far as I'm concerned. But that's just my yeah. opinion. The president, I agree with that. It, to the applicant, are there specific retail uses you have in mind? No, relative not at all. No, but we're looking at a long-term development project, and again, the concern is to have to go back to the voters on a use change, which typically would be considered a major deviation. And if we're, if they were prohibited from having any primary retail use, that could be an impediment. We're just providing, want to provide flexibility to both the applicant and the, and the city council. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Mr. Zeman, correct me if I'm wrong, but a secondary use approved by planning and council doesn't go back to referendum, correct? Of course not. Yeah, I think we're talking a little bit too abstract, to, to, to be blunt. Um, I, I think basically the planning commission, the administration, and council have all, have all reacted to what the proposal was, which was um, a, a designated area showing potentially one hotel operator and then uh, office buildings. So um, you've got your market studies. I know you've shared those with the administration. What, what do those market studies say um, you know, may be on the horizon in terms of retail uses in sub-area C that, that the council you know, can, can, content, you know, can deliberate tonight uh, if, in fact, it's going to allow for uh, what might become a principal use in this area if, if, if uh, your suggestion carries? Again, we have no specific, um, you know, retail use in mind. It's simply a question of preserving flexibility. Would it be um, possible to have, um, you know, language to the effect that a, you know, a limited percentage, again, in this determination of the council, would be permitted to be primary use? Um, 
Yes. Subject to approval of the city. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. I'm uncomfortable with the percentage part. Um, I think we should go with the uh, uh, the secondary use in our in our amendment and uh, and vote on it. Mr. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Zima. Uh, if if I may, just a, to to your point. Um, you know, in the city's experience when dealing with development, off, often the first potential business that we may, may, may want to locate isn't necessarily the ideal business in terms of the city's overall comprehensive plan to locate an area. So obviously uh, there may be a, a, a national retailer with a lot of economic might that can come in and, and say, hey, we want to build here, and, and that may produce a, you know, a great immediate return on investment. But that retail use, um, you know, may not be consistent with what, um, you know, the comprehensive plan and, and, uh, is for the city. The lesson is Newell Creek, where, as I stated earlier, there were proposals in the former Lifestyle Center to bring in a large grocery store, gas station, apartments. The, the patience of city leaders, current and, and past, has, has resulted in the clinic nearly breaking ground there. We've got Avery, we've got CT consultants, we've got, I can go down the list. Um, it's, it's an extremely important um, component, I think, objectively, um, when, when, when reviewing the comprehensive plan, uh, that this area be, be, be set aside for Class A office, medical use. Now, I'm not saying that that's ultimately what council should do here tonight, but I think the concern is that there shouldn't be an immediate ability to change uh, this, this what's, what's designated in this area, knowing that it may be a 20-year build-out. So if I may, Mr. President, I, I think perhaps um, some language simply saying there shall be no residential or principal retail uses in sub-area C, perhaps that addresses the issue so that you don't get a standalone retailer um, and that perhaps consistent with perhaps sub-area B, you may see sub-area C getting, getting developed in a like manner only rather than ground floor, uh, or excuse me, um, upper floor residential, you'd have upper floor office as opposed to, um, you know, a strictly commercial building, um, uh, office building. So President. Just a second. Could you read condition 21 again as you? Uh, yeah, I would just add the word, um, uh, there shall be no residential or principal retail uses in sub area C. Mr. Donovan. Right. Um, Mr. President. What was it? Why would you lock yourself into that, not knowing not what you? It's not. It's not. I mean, it's. Well, it's, he, we just heard this dissertation about substantial deviation. To me, that's a substantial deviation. You're, 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 you're for the, with, with the administration and what Mr. Kircher said being in secondary, which you yeah, originally secondary, agreed exactly. Huh? And that's not a bad thing. Right. It comes to planning and council. It's perfect. Exactly. exactly. It's perfect. So it's cut and dry. It's done. It is. That's I, how agree. I agree. I agree with you. So moved. Okay, we've got three already. Go ahead. <laughs> we have a motion on the floor. Was it seconded? Mm -hmm. Rated. And seconded. But there is no word, just point of discussion, there is no secondary in there now. It's just principal. I, I can change the language to whatever council desires. Um, I'm unclear now right what we're... Principal versus secondary, Mr. Zeman, if you could amplify that. Uh, I, I could change the language. Uh, there shall be no residential use in sub-area C. Um, only secondary retail uses may be permitted in sub-area C. And Mr. President, just to clarify, I'd like to get the administration's feedback on that to make sure we're all on the same page with what Mr. Filpak originally stated. I certainly appreciate what, what we're all trying to do here. Um, I think we're a little bit, again, all everybody here recognizes that this is going to be around for a long time, this development, if a full development. Um, I would maybe want to avoid something that on its face sounds no. prohibitive in nature. Right. Correct. Um, so can we read that back one more? Yes, Mr. Zeman, please read it again. All right. Uh, I, uh, I just modified it a little bit more so, so that it would state, there shall be no residential use in sub-area C, period. Retail may only be permitted as a secondary use in sub-area C. Uh, and, and if I may, Mr. President, I, I'm not really sure that secondary use is really a great term of art here. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think if I heard uh, the administration, uh, we're getting down in the weeds on a preliminary plan. Is that <laughs> well, fair I, to I, say? I, I think what, what uh, we would want, I think what we're okay with, from our perspective, is um, what we refer to as either secondary or ancillary use of retail within a building that is a, not, a red that is primarily designated as a non-retail use or purpose. The question of whether or not we could repurpose any of that space for uh, primary retail, let's call it, would would certainly be something that I think we're all comfortable that if Council and Planning Commission think is appropriate, you could do. Um, but in recognizing that if there was something that complemented the area that was a, a, a primary use, whether it was on 5% of it or 20% of it, of that area, I would be careful to not put in language that some of us who aren't in the room today are going to read and say, well, there's no way you can put up such and such business there because look at that language. So I... I, I, in, in the, but that may have satisfied that. I, I, we, I guess for the applicant's benefit and for the community's benefit, we wouldn't want it pro yes. completely prohibited. We wouldn't want the language to read so much so that it could be easily read on its face as prohibiting any retail that may come along down the road that you want to approve it specifically. So uh, you may want something in there that says, Unless specifically approved by city council, as a as an out, as a departure. And if, and if, well, it, that begs the question: If the condition we, we right now, I think we, I believe we have a motion and a second, but then the wording was changed by Mr. Zeman. Am I correct? Uh, I to try to revise it in response to some of the <laughs> comments that I've just heard. Yes, correct. it's a dynamic uh, condition, <laughs> but uh, so, but. Uh, Parliamentary procedure. We have a, a motion and a second. Do we need to withdraw that because the language has been changed? And then we either need to vote up this condition or, or vote it down after further discussion. I, I believe um, uh, that the motion was made after I read the revised language. The first revised, not the okay. Could you read the revised language again, Mr. Zeman? Okay. So there shall be no residential use in sub-area C, and retail may only be permitted as a secondary use in sub-area C. I, I had suggested that I think Mr. Filipiak's use of the term ancillary may be a better term of art um, for zoning purposes. Okay, and if we have a current uh, motion to um, amend for condition 21 and a second, is there any further discussion? Julie, call the roll. It's, 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 it's motion. Second, it's secondary. The word is secondary. secondary. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? No. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Condition 21 is passed. Have we completed the conditions that we've been discussing tonight, Mr. Zeman? I didn't have anything further in, in my notes, but obviously, Council, um, there, there, there may be additional conditions. Yes. Uh, also, remind Council that uh, we have the, the ordinance as amended is on first reading still. Mr. President, yes, sort of a planning commission item, but I know it's been brought up at uh, the planning commission level and, and this level too, and it, I, it's not a difficult thing to, to solve, but Mr. Quayle brought up headlight issues, mitigation. I'm sure you're aware of that, and you, you know there's a ton of techniques to, you know, to mitigate that. So just want to, I know he was pretty, ad, you know, adamant about it. So, uh, and it is, it will cause some issues if it's not worked out with, probably going to have to work with him to, to get that resolved. We appreciate that. When we get to the final development plan level, we'll get it down into those deals so we can detail, we can understand that. Thank you. Do it. Any other questions? I'll be glad to see a motion to... Is there any more discussion? 
on any point. You sure. We have an amended ordinance number 20-0-002, and it is on first reading. Move to suspend. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Stalling. Yes. Move to approve. Second. As amended. As amended. As amended. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Ordinance number 20-002 oh, has passed. Ordinance number 20-003. Oh, <laughs> Me too. Uh, Maybe there's more. Where, where are we? I forgot. <laughs> to revise the codified ordinances of the you. city of Menor 2006 as amended by adopting current replacement pages and declaring an emergency. Mr. Zeman. Uh, yes, Council. Um, these are sort of the, uh, I'll call them routine um, amendments to harmonize uh, our code of ordinances with revisions to state code. Uh, we contract with the Walter Drain Company to uh, to do these revisions, and I'd uh, encourage Council to uh, adopt them. Move to suspend. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Move to approve. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Ordinance number 20. O-003 has passed, and um, as, as the public is uh, leaving, I just want to say what we did tonight means it goes to the voters. So um, that will be Manor residents' ultimate chance to uh, vote on this proposed preliminary plan for the Bolton property. Thank you. Ordinance number 20 zero or O-004. An ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a mentor incentive grant with South Shore Controls. Mr. Flippia. Thank you, Mr. President. We are fortunate to have both Mr. Malachek and Ms. Conrad here with us this evening. I will oh. defer to Director Malachek. Thank you, Manager Flippiak. Uh, South Shore Controls has just moved into the city of Mentor, relocating from Perry, and uh, has just built their 35,000 square foot facility at 9395 Pinecone Drive. Uh, it's a total new investment for the city of 3.2 million, in excess of 3.2 million. Uh, the project is relocate, relocating 46 employees to mentor, and they do expect to create 15 additional jobs. Um, we have requested in the Mentor Incentive Grant proposal 10% uh, grant on new payroll retroactive in 2019 when they moved in the city in November on, and a 50% grant in years 2020 through 2028 if they do meet their payroll expectations. Something Thank you. Something. Move to suspend. Second. Council. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Move for passage. Second. Julie, call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Ordinance number 20-0004 has been approved. Resolution number 20-R-101. A resolution requesting an advance of funds collected for the benefit of the city of Menor and declaring an emergency. Mr. Flippia. Thank you, Mr. President. And this is our annual request uh, for the uh, auditor to distribute early our property tax revenues. Move to suspend. Second. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Resolution number 20R-101 has been adopted. Second readings, we have none. Third readings, we have none. 
manager's report. Mr. Filipiak. Thank you, Mr. President. I will keep this short, Council. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Landeg on your ascension to the presidency. We look forward to working under your leadership. And also congratulations, Mr. Krieger. It's been our pleasure to work with you for the last two years, and I think we've got a lot done together, so appreciate all your I don't cooperation. I know if ascension is a proper, proper word. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it might be. <laughs> Uh, just a few things, Council. Just a reminder to the public that the Mentor Chill Out, which is our uh, winter uh, outdoor activity uh, at the amphitheater grounds, will take place on Sunday, January 19th at the Civic Center Park from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., which will be transformed into a winter wonderland with all, with all day activities, a chili cook off, food trucks, as well as a fireworks display, which is unusual for us in the wintertime. Chill out will take place, uh, snow or shine, admission, and most activities are free, and there are details on the city's website. Uh, would like to congratulate firefighter paramedic uh, Don Bednarik for his 30 years of service to the community. Don will be retiring on January 19th, 2020. Very distinguished career, and we appreciate all his service to the community. And then finally, we wish to uh, welcome a few new businesses to the city. All in Adventures at 7850 Mentor Avenue, Master D's Pizza at 7502 Mentor Avenue, and Bergen Go at 7850 Mentor Avenue, which is in the Great Lakes uh, Mall food court. So congratulations to them, and we appreciate and welcome their investment in the community. That's all. Clerk's correspondence, Julie. Council is in receipt of um, the Mentor Municipal Court month end report of November 2019. That is all. Commission committee reports, meeting minutes, Board of Building and Zoning Appeals, November 12, 2019, Municipal Planning Commission, November 14, 2019, are in your packets. Old business. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Martin. Um, I know I speak for all of council, but like we, I'd like to personally thank the administration, everybody, not only in parks, recreation, planning, what have, finance, what have you, but you guys are doing one hell of a job. Uh, we are on winter break, and uh, I can't tell you the amount of people that came up to me over the holidays and just said what a pleasure it is to live in Mentor. And uh, I said, well, it's easy. you guys make our jobs easy. So I want to thank everyone in the administration for a great 2019 and uh, hopefully even better 2020. We really, we really appreciate it. Mr. Landig? Yes, Mr. Donovan. Mr. Martin beat me to it. Thank you guys for all your hard work. You guys did a heck of a job, including the last probably six to eight months has been incredible. A lot of pressure put on administration, Kathy, everybody involved, the engineers, you know, fire chief and police chief. This has been a group effort with this, uh, with the planning, and I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's absolutely incredible. Um, it, and, and, and what everybody did to protect the citizens and get the best possible product we can get is absolutely out of this world. And I want to thank everybody for all their hard work. It's a great job. We built a lot of trust, so thank you. New business. Council, we have appointments to be made to boards and commissions. We have two four-year terms on the build, Board of Building and Zoning Appeals ending 12-31-23. Do I have any nominations? Mr. President, I would like to make a motion to reappoint Richard Zaleski to serve a four-year term on the Board of Building and Zoning Appeals ending 12-31-23. Second. Julie, please call a roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you're paying uh, attention uh, still. That's order, good. order. <laughs> Chief, you got your defibrillator over there? <laughs> yes. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Oh, all right. <laughs> yes. Are there any other uh, additional nominations? Uh, yes, Mr. President, I'd like to reappoint Joe I. Felice. I second that. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. We have one four year term on the Municipal Planning Commission ending 12 31 23. Do I have any nominations? Mr. President, I would like to reappoint Jeffrey Varga. I second that nomination. Please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. 
There is one three-year term on the Fair Housing Board ending 12-31-22. Do I have any nominations? President, I'd like to uh, reappoint Julian Curtis. Mm. Mr. President, I second that motion. It's not a reappointment, so could we amend that? Oh, I'm sorry, appoint. I'm sorry. Thank you. And it's been seconded? Yes. Please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. We have three two-year term on the Board of Tax Review ending 12-31-21, but one will be appointed by the City Manager, so Council will appoint two this evening. Do I have any nominations? Yes. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Steve Ammerman to Second. the Tax Board. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Are there any other nominations? Ray. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion uh, to reappoint John Ayton to the Second. Tax Board. Second. Motion and second, and Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? I know we're in good hands. Mr. Blake? <laughs> yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. And there is one four year term on the tree commission ending 12 31 23. Do I have any nominations? Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion to reappoint Cindy Code Finner. Second? Yes. Second. Second. Julie, please call the roll. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landing? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Is there any other new business to discuss? Persons before council? We have none. Move to adjourn. Second. Oh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year.